welcome to another A-Level Computer Science video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on vector images. You will recall at GCSE we looked at bitmap images, also sometimes referred to as raster images, and we saw that they're made up of individual pixels. If you haven't covered this, you should go back and look at this material, because while I'm not making videos in the A-Level course about it, it is still coverable as part of the A-Level curriculum. Vector images are made up of mathematically described shapes such as lines, curves, arcs, circles and polygons. These are combined to create whole pictures. In this simple example here, you can see how several rectangles with different properties for colours and a triangle have been combined to create a basic outline of a house. To create more complex images, we would use what's known as Bezier curves. These are trigonometrically defined lines that can define appropriate curves within an image. Vector images store each of the shapes that the image is comprised of as lists of shapes and their relevant properties. A line, for instance, might have properties such as start and end coordinates, line colour and the weight of that line. A circle might have to know the centre position of the circle with X and Y coordinates, the radius, the line colour, the weight of that line, and the fill colour. A square might need to know the top left coordinates, both X and Y, the width, the height, the line colour, the fill colour, and probably the weight of that line as well. So for this example circle here, we would need to know the centre position of the circle so we know where to place it, that the line colour is orange, that the line weight is five pixels, that the fill colour is blue, and that the radius is 150 pixels. With this information, it can be redrawn. It can also easily be scaled. A vector image is usually a smaller file size because it's just a list of commands on how to draw the image. Vectors can also easily be scaled without pixelating like a bitmap would, as you can see in this example image. A vector cannot easily represent an image with a lot of different colours like you might see in a photograph. This is why we use bitmaps for these. A bitmap allows each individual pixel to be adjusted, making it better for retouching photos. Meanwhile, the scalability of vector images makes them perfect for things like company logos that might be used on something as small as a business card and as large as a billboard. That brings us to the end of this look at vector images. Join me in the next video when we'll be looking at Nyquist theorem and how MIDI works. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise computer science. And until next time, it's bye for now.